Merry Christmas, Rod here at A Better Way to Farm, where we increase yields and improve profits. It's exciting to spend day 10 doing manganese with you guys, and we're excited about that. I want to say on a sidebar, I appreciate all of you who are reaching out. Thank you, uh, Darren, for just calling us, and uh, we've had a bunch of people who are uh, reaching out to us, wanting to do it a little different, get started, go to the two-day fundamentals of agronomy, where we take a deeper dive into all this kind of stuff and how it is that it impacts you and we really appreciate you guys as always we would appreciate it if you give us a share with a friend today we're going to talk about manganese and the number one thing i want to say is it's not magnesium oftentimes in this industry we people want to throw those around and interchange them and the deficiencies sort of kind of look the same but what causes them is not and the response is not and so we're going to talk about manganese all right uh, going to our roles of uh, nutrients uh, they have to say here about this on day 10, we're going to be looking at a product that is part of certain enzyme systems. It's going to aid in chlorophyll synthesis, and it's really going to increase the ability, ability, availability of phosphorus and calcium. Guys, the more we look into this, the more we realize that the nutrients are all interrelated, and so just trying to apply a lot of one is not gonna be a replacement for putting on everything that we need in the right amounts. Obviously, if we're short in manganese, you can sorta of kinda of hide that to some degree by over applying phosphorus and over applying calcium. Why wouldn't we just put on the manganese that we need and then apply the right amount of the phosphorus and the calcium, and as an added bonus, we get those enzyme systems working and that chlorophyll synthesis going the way that we want it. Uh, starting out of the Midwest Labs book here, I love these guys. Again, I want to encourage you to download this baby, okay? Uh, you can download it for free, print it off, and bind it yourself, or for like 10 bucks, you can buy it from them. Their number is 402-334-7770. Tell them Rod sent you if you go there. So, some of the things about manganese, number one, we know that once we get past seven, as the pH increases, the availability of manganese drops. Uh, soil Soil pH appears to be the most important factor governing the availability of it. In acid soils, manganese becomes soluble and is available to the plants. If the soil gets very, very acid, down below four and a half, that's when we start looking at toxicity issues. And so we got to make sure that we're, you know, doing the right thing here, keeping that pH where we want it. Also, at a pH of 6.3, and above, the manganese may not be as readily available. So it's really important to understand, if we have our pH right, we may need to be putting some manganese right in the seed trench, and the soil test will tell us that. We don't have to guess. We wanna make sure that we've got that. Another thing to consider is, if we have poorly drained soil, we've got something that we needed tiled, or it's just a wet spot, you know, that's gonna limit root growth, and that is going to encourage the manganese to not go into the plant. As we look at it, some of the other things that it does is it breaks down carbohydrates and it's very involved in nitrogen metabolism. And it's involved in a lot of other plant processes, but that nitrogen metabolism is a big one. Guys, when we have all the nutrients that we need in the right order, then other nutrients that we're running are going to become more available. It's going to help nitrogen. It's going to help phosphorus. It's going to help calcium. And yet we know that lots of calcium make it unavailable. And so we've got to be aware of what we're doing here, but we've got to have the right nutrients at the right time in the right place. And so the manganese is something that's relatively easy to use. Uh, you can row place it. Uh, it's a liquid. It goes right into the trench and right into the plant. It's also, reading out of life and energy, called the element of life. It brings the electrical charge to the seed, and it is the key element, the key element for seed and offspring production. So guys, if we want to have adequate production, adequate offspring, adequate kernels, adequate, you know, all of the things that we have here going on, then what we want to do is make sure we have our manganese in the right levels when we're out there growing that crop. I really appreciate <coughs> um, Neil here. Uh, with everything that he does, and I love the fertility handbook that we got a hold of. And guys, you can get this, but you got to be looking on Amazon and just keep checking back. They become available and then they're gone, and, and they're really hard to get. They're out of print now. But uh, looking at 
what they have to say here. Deficiency is likely to occur in the following situations. Neutral or alkaline soils, acid or sandy soils also may have let it leach down. Your cereal crops, your bean species, corn, cotton, tobacco, several fruit and vegetable crops are highly susceptible to this manganese deficiency. Some crops that are sensitive to excess manganese would be alfalfa, clover, cotton, tobacco, and several vegetables. But guys, we are yet to really see a problem where we've had it excessive because it just tends to get drained out and not get put back. And again, uh, it's involved in your enzyme systems. It, it has to do with uh, chlorophyll production, using your carbohydrates and your nitrogen. These guys are all agreeing on this. They've all studied it, looking at the same thing. Uh, your deficiencies are mainly evident as intervenal chlorosis, and it may be confused with an iron or a zinc deficiency. In some severe deficiencies, the areas may become gray and then brown and eventually even die. So there's a real downside to not having enough and not not getting it to work right. We want to make sure that we have um, the proper amount available, and that's the key. We've got to make sure that it is available. Again, um, these guys, uh, the Western Fertilizer Handbook, talk about the fact that in studies they've done, it is closely associated with copper and zinc, and it apparently acts as a catalyst in plant growth processes. The most apparent symptom is a chlorosis between the veins of the younger leaves, okay, down at the, up at the top of the plant. The younger leaves are where you're going to see this first. And the loss of color is often developed by spots of dead tissue, which may drop out, giving the leaf a very ragged appearance. In, in substantially bad cases, the plant will probably be dwarfed, and therefore it will be stunted, and then we've lost a bunch of yield. Again, I just finished up the two-day fun fundamentals of agronomy, and we were talking about this, guys. We don't want to see visual deficiencies. We don't. We know that if it's visual, we've lost boatloads of yield. Soybean cyst nematode, visual, visual it's a 15-bushel yield hit. Um, purple corn, 6 to 15-bushel yield hit. Those are the things that we don't want to let happen. We want to diagnose these early. Let's do a soil test. Let's do what it says. Let's do a tissue test. and Let's correct those hidden hungers before they become available. Um, working from the soil up, Donald says, when certain crops such as soybeans will show the yellowing effect of manganese deficiency more quickly than corn. It must be remembered that a crop can be deficient. Even though it's not detected with the eyes, he calls those hidden deficiencies or hidden hungers. They have set the soil test for manganese at a minimum of 25 parts per million and would really like it to be, prefer it at 50 parts per million. You will note that the manganese levels are several times higher than zinc, copper, or boron. Because of this, it may be too expensive to try and build a soil level that is low. It would take 40 pounds of elemental manganese to raise a soil level from 10 to 30 parts per million. There are other ways that are more effective in doing this. Manganese may be obtained in a liquid chelate form containing five or more percent of elemental manganese, and these chelates are designed primarily for foliar feeding and are quite effective. And might I add, they also are very effective if you put them in the seed trench right on the seed if you're using an orthophosphate high quality fertilizer. And so the chelated manganese is a great way to go to, to solve your problem and keep you from having an issue there uh, with that. Again, I love Neil Kinsey and, and his work and what he's done to study with Dr. Albrecht from Mizzou, and they have done a great thing. And coming back and hitting this again, guys, everything works together. And your big three, I'd like to remind you, your big three for, for stock strength is potassium, copper, and manganese. I know I've hit that before when I was talking about the others. I, I mentioned that, but that's the deal. Potassium, copper, and manganese are very important. They're going to help you to have stronger stocks, to help them to go and, and to stay healthy. Also, not overusing nitrogen. We talked about that. That, uh, a matter of fact, I had a grower out in um, Kearney, Nebraska this week, and he was talking about the fact that when he started with us, he had been using about 1.4 or 1.5 pounds of nitrogen. In the very first year, he went back, and his goal was to use seven-tenths of a pound, and his yield actually went up. And he said his corn stood so much better, so much better. 
And so I find that interesting that, you know, when we do the right thing, as it says here on my old desk pad in big red ink, it is never wrong to do the right thing. Underneath that, it also says frustration is the precursor to innovation. What does that mean? If you're frustrated, you're not getting where you want to go, it's time to innovate. Let's take a look at something different, see if we can help you make a difference. So as we <clears throat> look at this, um, he says, even when the soil test levels of manganese show to be excellent, deficiencies can occur. It is a blockage due to an excess of potassium, and or sodium. So what happens is if we have too, too high a sodium or we have too much potassium going into the plant, then we can actually induce a manganese deficiency. And so that tissue testing is our friend. It's going to let us know where we have those levels. And then we can take corrective action. So foliar feed some manganese. And then in the future, rethink how we're doing our, our potassium or how it is we're going to work that sodium out and try and, and um, make it better. And again, Neil is hitting on this deal. Manganese, not to be confused with magnesium, accelerates germination, hastens fruiting and ripening. It's important in the assimilation of nitrates. We're going to use that nitrogen better. It's going to assimilate, use that carbon dioxide in photosynthesis better. And in combination with potassium and copper, it provides stock strength. It is essential to part of the enzyme systems. It also is directly involved in the uptake of iron. So now we've got an impact in nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, and iron. All those things depend upon this. He says that your first plateau on manganese is to be at 40 parts per million. Bare minimum, that's where he wants you. Our other author was saying tw about 20 up to 50. As the yields increase, we're growing bigger crops, that's going to go up. And he says it's not going to be excessive until you get to at least 250. I don't think very many people have a, a manganese level of 250 parts per million. He was arguing with some other people. They were talking about what level it should be. And he was actually, he'd flown to Germany to do some work over there. And he found out that his highest wheat yields there had the highest manganese levels. Some were as high as 250 parts per million. And so when all the other levels of the nutrients are right, a high level of manganese is your friend. Manganese and magnesium deficiencies can be somewhat similar in looks. Uh, in both cases, the plants turn yellow or white in between the veins, and those veins remain dark green. But the difference between a manganese deficiency, which shows up where, we already talked about this, in the new growth at the top, and a magnesium deficiency shows up in the old growth at the bottom. That's your deciding factor on how you know which one it is. Obviously, you confirm that with a tissue test, but we want to go. Uh, Neil also says that low self sulfur levels can cause less manganese to be available, or a very high organic matter can uh, keep it tied up and make it not available, and a low organic matter, less than 2%, is going to restrict the availability of manganese. And so there are a lot of things that impact it and uh, come back to bite us on how we get it here. And then the problem with that is, is that we have all of those things that impact the manganese. And then all of a sudden that manganese is, is coming in and it's impacting how we use all these other nutrients. And we want to be as efficient as we can this day and age with the price of nutrients. We absolutely want to do it. From one of our new books, Soil Fertility and Fertilizer by Pearson. Uh, not your easiest read, but he has a lot of great work that he's done in here. Uh, a lot of these guys have spent years in the fields working. He says, because of its essential role in photosynthesis, root and shoot growth rates are substantially reduced in manganese deficient plants. As a result, N and P accumulate, which increases the potential for rot root and leaf diseases. When we get too much of P and, and N in that plant, we increase the likelihood of root and leaf diseases. Manganese deficiency also restricts the formation of lignin and phenolic acids, which can help reduce the incidence of diseases. So having proper manganese is going to make that plant a lot less likely to get sick. Soil fungi that generally do not infect plant roots can cause disease in manganese deficient plants. In other words, something that if your manganese is correct, 
The fungi don't hurt you at all. If your manganese is low, they actually come in and create a sickness in your plant. So it is also the reason, guys, the reason that something shows up in the new growth instead of the old growth is because it is, an, it is a nutrient that is not mobile, okay? Like boron is exceedingly not mobile. We know that manganese is exceedingly not mobile. And so your, your deficiencies appear in the new growth first. That's, that's how we get that. Sulfur, not mobile. Got to keep having that come back in. And manganese fits into that category with your magnesium and your sulfur and your boron that you need to have available continuously throughout the growing season. Guys, we're enjoying doing the work. We're enjoying doing the study. We're loving the things that we're learning and, and uh, getting to study under these masters, these guys who've got PhDs, but it's more than a PhD. It's that they've spent hours and hours and hours and years and years and years actually studying and learning. They aren't people who went and got a book and then just called it good. They went and they, the reason we picked these guys is because they've done hands-on and that's what it takes to make this be efficient. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in. I hope you uh, realize you can find us on Facebook, Better Way to Farm. You can get us on TikTok at A Better Way to Farm. You can go on the podcast platform at A Better Way to Farm and listen to these. These will be made into podcasts. Plus, we have a ton of other podcasts that are there. I think I love the one. little shout out for Dr. Mulvaney from Illinois. Uh, he's got three on there. They're very worth listening to, guys. They will make you think a lot. So thank you for tuning in. I hope you're getting your holiday preparations done, that you're starting to get ready for Christmas. Your tree is up, and I hope it's a really great time for you and your family. We appreciate it, and we really do hope you guys are having a better day.